Parfait. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon. Today I'm going to talk about game server development in Node.js. I'm Charlie Crane. I'm from China, Hangzhou. It is a beautiful city near Shanghai. It is amazing to find that you guys all know the Chinese cities. Do you know how we know European cities? Sports. We know all the European cities through football, and we know all the American cities through basketball. I work at a company called NetEase. It is one of the biggest internet companies in China. It is also a NASDAQ listed company. And the stock price actually is rising really quick recently. And uh, if you guys are interested in investment, you might uh, consider this. <laughs> and actually, uh, two weeks before I spoke this in JSConf EU, the stock price rise about 4% that day. <laughs> Damn, I'm so good. OK. <laughs> I have been working in NetEase for about eight years. And recently, we open sourced our game server framework in, Net in Node.js. And it's called Formula. So, this is what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about the state of Pomelo and uh, the design and motivation of the framework and some practice of it. So let's get started. Pomelo is a fast, scalable, distributed game server framework for Node.js. It was open sourced about 10 months ago. But although it is quite young, but it is quite uh, popular in China now. Actually, not only in China. A lot of people have using my using our framework. OK. So what can Pomelo do? Pomelo is a game server framework. It can do mobile games, web games, social games, and even MMORPG. Only in one premise, it needs a real-time multi-user interaction. So if you are developing a game like Angry Bird or Temple Run, this is a single player game, right? There is no real-time multi-user interaction exists, so you do not need our framework. But actually, Pomelo is also suitable for real-time application. It is a better real-time application server framework, as I say. It is much more scalable and adaptable, actually. Pomelo is not a single project. If you take a look at our GitHub uh, account, there are about 40 repositories there. So what's all this project about? Well, there are a bunch of demos. We actually have a big demo, which have more code than our framework. And we have support a lot of clients, including C, iOS, uh, JavaScript, Unit 3D, and uh, etc. all the clients support. And we have a bunch of tools, including admin console, command line tools, and uh, some performance test tools, and also some libraries, including AI, schedule, pathfinding, and et cetera, et cetera. Actually, there are a lot of projects. And beneath it is the framework itself. And this is our main project. It actually developed quite quick recently. OK, we are already have many success stories. And this is one of it. It is a mobile game in Chinese mythology. And it is quite popular in China now. And we have a very active community. But you know what? We Chinese guys just don't like MinList and IRC channel. We like forum and QQ chat group. So the IRC is not that active, actually. OK. So let's jump into the motivation part. Node.js is extremely suitable for game server development. So take a look at the definition of Node.js. Look at these keywords, fast, scalable network application, real time. All these keywords are the characteristics of game server. Game server is fast, scalable, and it needs a network and real time. What a perfect match. So let's take a deep look at the advantage. First, of course, is scalability. Node.js is developed for event-driven I.O. And game is such network incentive application. It needs a massive network flow. So this is a perfect match. The second is language. We originally think that it is a benefit to share language between client and server through HTML5. But it turned out it is not only HTML5. If you are using Cocoa 2DX or Unity 3D, 
You can also use JavaScript in the client. So you can also have the benefit of shared language between the client and the server with these platforms. The third reason is multi-process single thread. Usually, game server logic is quite complicated. You will meet some complicated logic, and if you are writing in multi-thread style, you will have some logic problem, and uh, sometimes have some lock and deadlock. Wow, that is really hard. But if we are right in Node.js, it have a very good single thread model, and it can simplify everything. There is no lock, and it can minimize the logic uh, errors. And the fourth reason is lightweight. Usually, game server development is quite, quite heavy. It, uh, in our company, usually when people need uh, two machines and start many processes, and uh, the startup process is quite, quite slow. But with Node.js, I can develop everything in one machine and occupy very, very slow, very, very few resources. And also, it starts up really, really quick. But of course, there are some disadvantages in Node.js because there are some CPU sensitive actions in server, like pathfinding and AI. But in practice, it can also all be solved. For example, pathfinding, we can divide uh, these actions in single process, and it can be solved really, really nice, in, as you see in, in our demo. And AI, it can also be solved. As you can see in our demo, AI does not occupy too much CPU. It is very, very it occupies very, very few resources. We are not the first guy who used Node.js as game server. A few months before we open sourced, browser publish, uh, uh, Mozilla published its browser quest. Uh, it's a game demo. Well, it is a very good demo for client side, actually. It is an MMX game. It also uses Node.js as game server. But, Server-side implementation is quite naive and uh, simple, actually. It do not, uh, implement hand, cannot handle too much online users. And uh, Google also published its game called Grid's Game. It also uses Node.js as game server. There is an excellent talk in Google I.O. in 2012. It is also a good demo, but the same problem. The server-side is too simple. And this is our demo. So let's take a, a little bit look. Hmm. Does not work. OK. It is a multiplayer game. It actually can hold about a thousand of people. But since I start in local, I just uh, use five people. And uh, this is an MMORPG game. And uh, I can attack uh, the player. And uh, I can attack the monster. Actually, the monster have artificial intelligence. When I come near, it will chase me. Oh, no, it will attack me. Oh, I have to run. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I'm dead. Uh, actually, I have five characters. This character is in another map. And uh, also, oh, this one I'm being killed. And I can run. This. I can run to the another map, another area, actually. Oh, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> in the wrong place. OK, OK, OK. This map, the monster is uh, much stronger, so I have to escape. So this is basically the demo, OK? Let's jump back to the. So. What's the difference between our demo and Mozilla Browser Quest? Well, the difference is on the server side. We have a very strong server side, and this is the runtime architecture of our demo. As you can see, each rectangle represents a process. In the front end, there are a group of server called connector, which do not do real business logic. It just hold long connections, and it will forward the business logic to the back end, and in the area server is where the real business logic is done. It will do its business logic and forward back to the connector, and the connector will push the message to the client. But 
there are not only area server, actually in a, an actual game, there are about uh, more than 10 type of servers there. It is quite complicated architecture, actually. So, as I say, there are more than web developers here than game developers. Developers. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a short comparison between web and game. First is long connection. Game server use long connection for two reasons. First is risk, is instance response time. Uh, game server need a much quicker response. And the second reason is bi-direction message communication. It not only need to send a request to the server, it also need a push message down to the client. So it must use long connection. And the second is partition. Game server is partitioned by area. So what does that mean? As you can see the demo before, when I'm walking around and fighting the monster in one map, in one area, actually, I am in one process, but as I transferred from one map to another map, I'm actually transferring from one process to another process. So, what's the benefit of this design? Because most of the player interaction is happening in one map, right? We fight each other all in one map. So, if I can put all these things in one process, all this can be done in memory. No network communication is needed. So, it must be designed in this way. But, it can cause a problem. It's called stateful. Because I am in this area, in this map, I must be in this process. So, every request come to the client must be routed to that process. And this is called stateful because each request must be routed to a specific process. This is why game server is usually not as scalable as web. And the fourth reason is request broadcast. Usually, in the web, you just send the request and get the response. But in game, when you send a request, it usually needs to broadcast to all the players who can see me, as I showed the demo before, when I walk around. I must push all the message to all the players who can see me. I need to push all this message instantly. So I need a lot of broadcast and it can cause some performance problem. Okay, this is end up of the difference of game and web. In the left hand is web. It can enjoy the benefit of load balancer, right? So it is, the architecture is quite simple. It is stateless. So each request can send to specific process. In the right side is game server architecture. There are diff many different types of processes and it uh, needed to talk to each other. And the architecture is like spider web. Oh, it's quite complicated, right? It's too complicated. So <laughs> how do we solve this? Framework, of course. This is what I'm gonna talk about today. So let's jump to the third part, framework. Okay, the essence of Pomelo is a distributed, scalable, real-time application server framework. If you take a look at our call, it actually has nothing to do with game. It is just a real-time application framework. So, what's the difference between our framework and media, Derby, and Sears, this framework? Well, we are not an MVC framework. We have nothing to do with model view, something like that. We are just try to make uh, the architecture before, the game architecture, distributed architecture and scalability as easy as possible. So, let's take a look at our design goal of framework. So, the first part is abstract of servers. As you can see, there are a bunch of server types and servers. We need a simple way to manage all these server types and servers, and this is what we call abstract of servers. We need a very, very simple to manage all these things. The second is abstract of request response and broadcast. As you can see, in web, we need a request and response. It is also needed in game server. But in game, we also needed the other direction of the message. It needed to broadcast and push message to the client. So we also need a broadcast API. And the third part is a server communication. Actually, there are a bunch of RPC framework out there, but usually it's quite difficult. In this specific case, we can make RPC as easy as possible. 
So let's jump into the first part, server abstraction. We abstract server into two types, the front-end server and back-end server. The front-end server do not do the real business logic. It just hold a connection. It will forward a message to the back-end server. And the back-end server usually will do some business logic. It also will talk to other back-end server. And when the, the transaction is done, it will send back the message to the front-end. And the front-end will push message to the client. So you guys should be all familiar with the concept of duct type, right? It is a basic concept of object-oriented program in dynamic language. If an object quack like duck, fly like duck, then it is duck. <laughs> we can also deduce this theory to server. So if your server acts like uh, a duck and quack like duck, then it is duck server. So if your server is act like a chat, and it is a chat server. So let's see how the duck, duck is defined. In the left side is uh, where the server defined. We just define all these folders in the, under the server's directory. So each folder represents a server. And in the right side is where the duck is defined. Actually, there are only two types of uh, interfaces in the server duck. One is handler, which receives requests from the client. The other is remote, which receives requests from other servers. So, all you need to do is fill in the code in the business logic in handler and the remote. And when you are done, the duck is done. But we actually need a configuration file. We try to minimize configuration file, but we just need one. And this is it. It is quite straightforward. We just add the server type and the server here. And uh, you can see it is quite easy to add and uh, reduce. It is quite easy to scale up, scale down. We also actually support dynamically act server and uh, remove server through command line or other ways. We have a good interface for it. So it can scale up, scale down, dynamically like cloud computing. OK. The second part is request abstraction. Well. In media, it is called client call remote method on server. It is something like that, quite similar, actually. We just uh, send uh, this request, and uh, this is a string, and it will automatically route it to specific server and a specific, me specific method in the server. It's actually quite uh, easy and quite straightforward. So, you may wonder what uh, is been, what beneath this uh, connection. Actually, we have a very good component system. If you load uh, the connector, SIO connector, it will use socket.io. If you want uh, to use uh, hybrid connector, it will support socket and web socket because uh, in web, uh, in mobile environment, um, everyone needed to minimize the bandwidth, so they usually use socket. And uh, socket.io is quite good for browser compatibility, so it usually be used in browser. We actually can configure it in one file. This is the example. We can support socket.io and socket in one project. It is very good for projects who need to support browser and mobiles uh, in the in one game, okay. So, the other part is the broadcast. I minimize this page, actually. It's just a very simple API. It's just a push message to the client. We can use anonymous channel push, and we can also use the named push. Actually, it's quite simple, but it usually can cause serious performance problem because broadcast is quite frequent in game, actually. Okay. Let's jump to the third part, RPC. Well, I don't think I need any explanation because it's too simple. <laughs> it's just uh, app.rpc, and the other part is just uh, like call in client side. Just call it. It's like a local method and all done. So why RPC is so easy in Pomelo? Because you know, usually in some RPC framework, you need to set up some IP and uh, connect to it, and uh, sometimes you need, a, in Thrift, you need to write a Thrift, Thrift file, 
and you generate uh, the source code from Thrift and copy the source code to the application. And when the signature changed, I needed to do it again. But in Pomelo, we just start up, all done. So how can we do it? Because we have a better server abstraction. As you can see, all the IP stuff has all configured in the previous file. And because we have put all these signatures in server folder, right? All the docs in this server folder. So the client side can scan all the server signatures when start up. So start up, all the proxies can generate uh, automatically. So start up, all done. It's that easy. So let's jump to the last part, practice. Practice, we need uh, to show you how to program with formula, OK? I will show you a simple use case. It's called um, player move. So this is the workflow of player move. Actually, the first step is client will play some animation and send a move request to the server. And when the, the connector receives the move request, it will route it, uh, this message to specific server. It will route it to area server, and the area server is where the real business logic is done. It's done in move handler. And when the logic is done, it will push a message back to the connector, and the connector will broadcast to all the clients who can see me move. And all the other clients need to play animation. And this is the simple workflow. OK, let's jump to the code. This is the first part. The client side just send the request to the server. It is client call method to the server. It's quite straightforward. And the second part is where the server receives the message. As you can see, our signature is a little different from HTTP because we are using long, long connection. So message in signature, the message is quite equal to request and a session because we are using a long, long connection. And the, the third parameter is next because we are using node.js. We need to call back, right? OK. So in this business method, all we need to do is verify path and handle some move action. And after that, I will use channel API, the broadcast API, to push message back to the, all the clients who can see me. And the next part is the callback. Actually, in this callback, the framework will automatically push the second parameter to the client. It's like a response. OK, the last part, the client side who receives this broadcast we are use this on method and uh, play all the move animation. All done, right? Actually, we've missed something. How do the connector find the specific area server? We need a configuration, and this is it, app.root. And uh, as you can see, this is quite simple, because I am in this server, this specific server. So I just get the server ID from this from the session, and then return call back this method. All done. So with this method, I can route it all the client message to this specific server. OK. Character move, isn't that easy? Actually, there is some problem in, re in reality. First, it's different situations. I just demoed a player move, actually. There are mob move, and some player move is all driven by AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, the workflow is quite different. And the second problem is quite difficult. It's called a smooth effect. Usually, the client just receives command from the server and play some animation. But if all do this in this way, I will cause some latency and a delay. The animation is not that smooth. So usually, I will play animation first. And when I receive the server command, I will move to the, and I will move. It will usually call the animation not quite smooth. So I need a latency compositor to make the effect quite smooth. The third part is how to notify. We can notify all the messages to all the players in the map, right? It will cause serious performance problem. All we need to do is notify to the players who can see me. And there is an algorithm in our library. It is called AOI. Oh, I think that's all. I actually leave too much topics uh, not see. I can't believe I 
cannot talk performance because the time is limited. And actually, there are a lot of stuff like plugin and real-time application server framework. Actually, we are doing a good application in Permila. It's not a game. It's just uh, an application can scale very, very well. And uh, AI and uh, et cetera, et cetera, a lot of stuff. So uh, I think uh, time is limited. That's all. So thank you very much. Thank you.